a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you a board game playthrough. This time I am playing Hour of Need by, or from Blacklist Games, I should say. Now, uh, quick disclaimer, this is my literal first time playing this game. I've watched a few playthroughs, I've read through the rule book, but there are still some things that I'm not too sure of, so I might get some of the rules wrong. I'm playing with the setup that they recommend in the book for your first game. I'm using Majesty as my character. I'll just shuffle her deck. I'm going up against Dowager. I have removed the cards that they tell you to remove if you are playing with only one character or one player. These cards here that have the little one uh, down there. And I am doing the Century Heist issue. Now, this is a <clears throat> modular deck game, very similar in vain to um, Street Masters, Brook City, uh, those sorts of games. I have my clue deck here, which I will give a shuffle on camera. So, the purpose of this game is to basically foil. Uh, defeat Dowager before she robs the um, Crown City um, Century Bank vault over there. Um, I have our bystander tokens set up off screen up here. I have our Stooge miniatures there and uh, our other tokens. This is Dowager's miniature. And here is Majesty. The base game comes with two villains, four issues, and four heroes. But this is the one that they recommend. <clears throat> Have our dice here. That is a single success. That is a success and a focus. Uh, that is a focus and that is a burst. With the burst, you basically just get another die to roll so you can kind of chain things together. I'm a little bit nervous about this, actually, just because I've never played this before, so hopefully I don't mess it up too much. But I'll give you a little bit of backstory on Majesty. I'll hold the card up so you can see. She has 15 health, 2 attack, 2 solve, and as an action, move to any space within 4 of you and choose a hero to draw 1 card. The rule book, um, or I should say the issue book, comes with her backstory. She's a complexity one, so I'll just read this quickly. <clears throat> uh, Bridget Walsh was born under a baleful sign, a streak of abyssal black cutting through the morning sky, a tear in our reality. The anomaly that marked Bridget's birthday was studied fervently by scientists for decades to follow, but was destined to become tabloid fodder printed on the same pages as reports of UFO and Bigfoot sightings. However, the occurrence left its mark on Bridget permanently, as a child, Bridget's parents observed what they convinced themselves were hallucinations, explosions of brilliant light, levitation, and bouts of inexplicable euphoria. Unbeknownst to them, an interstellar force had escaped this dimension through a tear and found a host in Bridget, granting her a set of powers that would be crucial in saving not just her world, but her entire reality. By the time Bridget reached adolescence, she had become fully aware of her abilities and did everything she could to hide them uh, at her parents' instruction. Fearing their daughter might be taken from them, Lynn and Arthur Walsh moved frequently, relocating any time their daughter's abilities drew unwanted attention. Bridget wouldn't become a hero until the day her parents sacrificed themselves to the galactic emissary of Mythora, who was destined to become the hero known as Jem. In an effort to hide the parody shards, which would certainly fall into the wrong hands and lead to the world's demise should they remain on Earth. Lynn and Arthur became lost in the web of cosmic gates known as the Astralacy, so Bridget could protect the Earth as majesty, using the power she inherited from the ancient interdimensional spirit of hope and positivity within her, powers that her world so desperately lacked. So that is Majesty's backstory. Dowager <coughs> is a complexity one uh, villain. 
Cassandra Russo was not always infested with an otherworldly menace pushing her to sinister lengths in a blinding pursuit of power and wealth. She was once devoted wife to Luigi Russo, better known as the criminal mastermind Wise Guy, who was head of the mob in New Crown City. Villainous ambitions uh, was born within Cassandra when a surprise police raid drove Luigi's crew from their usual place of operations. The Russo mansion became the temporary home of the mob, and it was due to this happenstance that Cassandra was one night drawn into her husband's study. She was alone in the house, and a strange sensation compelled her to enter the one room of their home that she had never stepped foot in. It was there she found the capsule, a smooth device that looked like it was swiped off the set of a science fiction film. The compelling sensation pushed her on, and when she opened the device, the entity within found a new host. The being known as Rampant uh, was from a remote corner of the Astralacy and existed only to break barriers. Once Rampant emerged with Cassandra, every one of her deepest, darkest desires was suddenly untethered, and she became the woman she was born to be, Dowager. It wasn't long after her union with Rampant that Dowager arranged for the death of her controlling husband, leaving her in full control of the mob. Not only is Dowager... A uh, criminal mastermind that spent years learning mob tactics and methods from her husband, but Rampant imbues her with inhuman strength and other powers that can manifest in different ways, depending on various alignments within the Astralacy. Okay, so we have our hero majesty, our villain Dowager. Let's check out uh, <clears throat> Century Heist. It's a complexity two. Okay. The streets of New Crown City are busy as any other day. Average citizens pick up their morning coffee on their way to work, drop off their children at school, and report to their routine jobs. Downtown is the most thriving district where executives and creatives alike stimulate the economy. At the heart of it all is Century Bank. Good morning, Deb! Walter's voice echoes as he swipes his badge at the clerk entrance. The massive vault is the centerpiece of the bank's cavernous lobby gleams in the morning light. Uh, as the morning light pours in, from the uh, high windows. How's Michael? He's due, Deborah says with a smile, blowing steam off her morning coffee. No detention this week. Walter laughs as she rests one hand on her holstered sidearm, never one to get too comfortable at her post. Even though Century Bank employs a guard at both entrances, Deborah was responsible for the entire lobby and she took her job very seriously. Don't work too hard. Walter's voice is suddenly cut off as the clerk's door closes on Deborah. His muffled voice sounds panicked. How do you get back here? Deborah takes a step towards the teller's window, but hears the familiar click of a handgun behind her. Uh, she freezes, her hand jolting away from her own gun as if it were scalding hot. Take a break. A menacing voice instructs as an unfamiliar hand removes the gun from Deborah's holster. It's going to be a long morning. Now, the scheme that we have uh, randomly gotten is uh, the subway tunnels. Takes 10 to solve it. Uh, the, the villains' minions are securing an escape route in the Crown City subway tunnels. Its entrance is heavily guarded. When we activate it, if there is at least one minion in the subway tunnels, the villain schemes. Otherwise, place one minion in the subway tunnels. Okay, so let's have a look at subway tunnels. Marty slammed the phone down, taking a puff from his quickly depleting cigarette. He mashed it into an ashtray as he stared at the flashlights, at the flashing lights of the subway tunnel display in the control room of New Crown City Department of Transportation. What is going on down there? He demanded to uh, know from no one in particular. Sir, a young man in a suit said as he approached uh, cautiously. We have three teams down there in these tunnels, and it seems to be some unauthorized construction equipment blocking several routes. We're working on clearing them. Well, work harder! Marty shouted, lighting another cigarette. Well, those trains sit idle. We can't get anyone out of downtown. <clears throat> oh, that was embarrassing. Okay. So, this is the game turn. First, the villain takes a turn. These are the play icons we might find on a card. Then the hero takes a turn. We have two actions that we can use. After the last uh, hero completes their threat phase, which is what is up here, we draw a card and then we take the issue turn. So that is the game. So we will get started. The villain takes a turn. Um, so you can see there are four issue spaces and Dowager at the moment is on issue one. She hasn't advanced. 
She is in the abandoned warehouse. The industrial side of downtown is home to many dark, dreary places, perfect places for nefarious uh, figures to hatch devious plots. At the moment, she is hidden. We have one hidden token per character. To get rid of that hidden token, we have to solve this, which is here. Um, and she is trying to open the vault and steal the gold. So the first card is a stooge. It's a blue stooge. So we come down here. We place him on the blue icon over there. Um, he has eight health to inflict no armor. And when we activate him, we will move three and inflict. So... I have to draw my hand of four cards. I can mulligan once. Let's see what we have. Uh, don't tempt me. Discard one minion from your scheme panel to place one justice on the problem. Then you may discard one additional minion uh, from your scheme panel to either. Okay, not bad. Gain one dice during your attack. Exhaust. When you would suffer damage, reduce that damage by two. I got two of those for each threat card. For each card in the threat area, each hero gains one focus and heals one damage. The hero may discard one focus to draw a card. I'm going to actually mulligan one of these because I don't need it. So I will draw another card, which is Hothead. And then I will shuffle that back in. Okay, well, Hothead, this, co this costs an action to do. Uh, these do not cost an action. Um, so I can, for one of my actions, I can draw a card. I can move three spaces. I can play an action card. I can attack or I can solve. Okay, well. I am going to play Power of Positivity. It's not an action card because there's no action symbol, but it gives me an extra dice when I attack. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, I'm going to spend an action. Uh, move up to four spaces away. So I'm going to use her ability to move one, two, three, four, and draw a card. Okay, color of the sky, constant, costs an action to use. Um, I'm going to use rousing speech for each card in the threat area. Each hero gains one focus and heals one damage. Then each hero may discard one focus to draw a card. So I will get two focus tokens. Uh, which I'll just put underneath. Or I'll put on her actually. So I have two focus tokens. Focus tokens can be used to change this result into a success. And then... You know what? I don't like that... Uh, stooge being there so i'm going to play hothead you may attack a space up to five away reducing the target's defense value it might be a waste he has a defense value of zero but i have an attack of three because i have power of positivity and two dice here and i get three successes doing three damage to the stooge i have used both of my actions from the scheme panel, okay. I can't use any more of these cards, so I now have to activate in my threat area. If there is at least one minion in the subway tunnels, the villain schemes, otherwise, place one minion in the subway tunnels. So we get our this is our minion token. I do have the upgrade pack, which upgrades minions and bystanders to miniatures, but I'm not actually using it for this game for the moment. Activate, move three, and inflict. Well, he only needs to move one. And he's going to inflict, so he's going to hit me for two. 
Um, let me just see what these are. Mobility and deduction. So these cards have this symbol on it. That is mobility. That is deduction. I can discard that for a, to move anywhere, and I can discard that to um, do a solve action. Um, he's inflicting two. I don't have any defense against that. So Majesty is going to take two damage to her. So I'll just put the damage underneath uh, where you can't see it, but I can. And that is Majesty's turn. And we now go to the Vault. Okay, so we draw a heist card. Now when this deck runs out, we lose. We've taken too long. Okay, a desperate escape. If the villain is in the subway tunnels, a crisis occurs. Otherwise, the villain schemes. So, the villain schemes. The scheme up here, if the vault is on its open side, the villain advances. Otherwise, place one issue token on the vault. Okay. One issue token. And when there are three... Um, I believe when this card is flipped, play three issue tokens on it. Oh, wait, that's on its open side. It should be on its sealed side. Okay, if it has three issue tokens, it gets flipped. Okay, now we go to the Delger's turn. That's how simple or quick these games uh, kind of go. Murderous Intent. Okay, we don't worry about anything underneath. This has Showdown on it. That only occurs if we're attacking her. Um... So that is place one minion on the corresponding panel. So a minion is going to be in Century City Bank. Uh, this says the villain inflicts or schemes. She can't inflict uh, because there is no one nearby. So she is going to scheme. <clears throat> Not good. And this says place one bystander on the map or the villain captures one bystander. We have four bystanders on the map spaces already. So the villain captures a bystander. And that was Dowager's turn. I actually forgot after the threat I was supposed to draw a card. Um, okay, and I refresh these. Um, let's see. I'm going to use an action to attack. Okay, I got two bursts. I get a focus token. So two bursts means two more die. One more burst. A hey, focus token. Uh, let's see. I did one, two, three, four, five. He had five damage left. So I have defeated this stooge. That was an amazing roll. And because I defeated the stooge, I get a clue card. Hacked comms. Exhaust one enemy in the hero's threat area. I can either discard it to get two extra dice or... Discard it to use this feature. So clues I'll just put underneath as well. I can see them, but you can't. He, that stooge goes away. Okay, let me just get rid of all those dice off the map. Um, I'm going to use an action to play Color of the Sky. I'm going to exhaust color of the sky to move three spaces one two three and um let me okay okay it's console action there must be in the appropriate scheme panel or near the game element that corresponds to the problem card. Okay, near. 
case and space. Okay, well, I am near, I'm in an adjacent space, so I can um, no problem. So I'm going to play this to discard one minion from your scheme panel to place one. Oh, I've got to be on the scheme panel, I think, not near it. Okay, well, that is my turn. So threat, if there's at least one minion in the subway, tunnel the villain schemes. Oh, man. Okay, if there are at least three tokens, discard all tokens and flip it. So the vault has been opened. When this card is flipped, place three issue tokens on it. These are the gold bars the villain needs for her nefarious purpose. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Uh, and then I draw a card, and I get another color of the sky. Come on. Oh, I know what I should have done. It doesn't matter. I could have uh, discarded this to move to any space, then use this to get rid of the minion, but that was me. I messed up. That's okay. It's my first game. Um, okay. So now we move to here. Nothing there. So we draw a card. Crisis. A crisis occurs. Okay. Crisis occurs. You must either move one issue token from this card to the villain card or move one issue token from the villain card to the Issue overview card. Okay, well, Dowager has stolen one of the gold bars already that she needs. Okay, Dowager's turn. Okay, so we get uh, a minion in the abandoned vault and place one bystander on the map or the villain captures one bystander. So we have another captured bystander this is not good if too many bystanders are captured um we will get a crisis okay well we untap i'm going to exhaust to move in here um let's see what i can do i'm going to play this discard one minion from your scheme panel to place one justice on the problem Going to get rid of that minion to place uh, a justice on the problem. I assume that's a justice token. Then you may discard one additional minion from your scheme panel. Well, I can't. So that was a free action. Um, okay, I'm going to use this action to do a solve. I only roll two dice. I get one, two successes. I'm going to spend to make that three successes. Ah, uh, that's the wrong token. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. And I'm going to solve again. And I get two more. Successes, so I have six of ten on the subway tunnels solved. Um, you know what? For that last one, I would have discarded my clue to get two extra dice. So I am going to do that kind of retroactively for two more successes. So we have 8 of 10 on that. I have done everything I can do there. I don't want to do this. Uh, if there is at least one minion in the subway tunnels, the villain schemes. Otherwise, put a minion. There is not. Okay. Uh, we go here. Nothing. Okay. Locks cunning. If Loxley token is in play, he inflicts. Otherwise, the Loxley token is not in play. So the villain is going to scheme. If the vault is op on the open side, the villain advances. So the villain is going to advance to Century Bank. 
Okay. We come over to Dowager now. The Widow's Trail. So we get a minion on the subway tunnels. And one bystander has been captured. This is not good. I need to start rescuing bystanders. Okay, come on, Majesty. What are you going to do? And of course, we forgot to draw our card at the end. We get X-ray vision. You may solve as if you're in any scheme panel, ignoring enemy effects. Um... I'm going to discard this card to, uh, in the hero turn, place your figure on any space on the map. I'm going to there. I'm going to use this uh, to solve as if I was in any scheme panel, ignoring uh, enemy effects. That's going to take one of my actions. So I solve for two. I'm, of course, solving this. Uh, that, I'm going to spend a focus to turn that into a success. That is 10, which means we flip this over. Uh, when this flips, place one issue two can, token in the villain's scheme space. This is the train stop. The hero may solve this problem. Activate if the hero is near the train stop. They scheme. Otherwise, they move to the train stop. Oh, that. that that's not good. Okay. Okay, that was a bad turn. Um, I'm going to... Oh, and I get a clue for um, doing that. Okay, extra dice. Okay. Um, I'm going to fight the, uh, the minion. I only need one success, which I get. I get a focus as well because of this. So I've defeated the minion. I think um, if I look at bystanders, the bystander rule, anytime a hero moves into or otherwise enters a space on the map, they immediately rescue, the hero returns. Captured bystanders can't be rescued. So I've got to do a solve action. If some hero rescues a bystander this way, the hero returns a bystander. So I actually have to do a solve action, I think, to rescue these two bystanders. Um, and then I'm going to discard this to move to... Um, this is tough. This is so tough. To move to this space, I'm going to rescue that bystander just to get him back in there and gaining me another clue. You may solve. Okay. Okay, activate. If the villain is near the train stop, the villain is on the train stop, they scheme. Okay, if otherwise move one token from the vault to the villain card. Okay. And now we have our Sentry Heist turn. If the villain is in the subway tunnels, a crisis occurs. Otherwise, the villain schemes. Wow. The villain has just stolen all of the gold that they need. That is not good. Um, by the way, when I solved that escape routes, um, when the escape route card was solved, the new Crown City subway system has become an absolute catastrophe. A series of unauthorized construction projects have blocked various routes and the trains that are running are not stopping where they're supposed to. There's something going on deeper in the tunnels, but there's no way to find out while the trains are still running and stopping wherever they wish. While there's no pattern to when and where the trains stop, there has to be a reason now stopping where they are. Yes, there does. Uh, 
Um, okay, so Dowager now has all of the gold from the bank vault. Okay, Ruthless Action. The villain inflicts or schemes. If no issue tokens remain on the vault, otherwise to the villain card. Well, the villain has all of the um, gold. Okay, she captures another bystander. And then we have special. If Dowager is scheming, a crisis occurs. Otherwise, she inflicts on the hero and each hero discards one constant card from play. Um, she is scheming. So a crisis does occur. You must either move one issue token from this card to the villain or move one issue token from the villain card to the issue card. Okay, well... Mm, that should be on there. Okay, special rebuff of your attacks. Discard one purple from the vault. There are the three issue cards. The villain has escaped with the gold and the heroes lose. Wow. Okay. Oh, and I didn't draw my one card. <laughs> X-ray vision. You may solve as if you were at any scheme panel. Ignoring... That gets reset. Okay. I'm going to discard this clue to draw a card. And we get... Oh, and I can now... Uh, because I solved this, she is no longer hidden. Um, I'm going to spend that to solve... I'm going to go after Dowager. She has... I need five. Okay, one, two. I'll discard a focus for three. Uh, one, two, three. So I've used my X-ray vision to see that Dowager has stolen the gold from the bank vault. Um... <clears throat> I'm going to discard this as an action to move to any space on the map. And I am um, – wait a second. No, I'm not. No, I am not. Um, no, that would be a waste. That would definitely be a waste. Um, what does Majesty want to do? You know what? I'm going to exhaust that to move one, two, three. And that's going to be my turn. The villain is near the train. Stop. They scheme. If no issue tokens remain on the vault, the villain advances. Okay. Century Heist. Okay. Loxley is not in play, so the villain is going to scheme. If no issue tokens remain on the vault, the villain advances. The villain has made it to the subway tunnels. Okay. Um, I didn't draw a card at the end of my turn, so I will draw a card now. Optimistic Spirit. Okay. And Dowager's turn. Oh, we get another Stooge coming out. This time the yellow Stooge right there. Okay, my turn. I'm going to discard 
to move into the subway tunnels. I'm going to spend one, two, um, I'm going to spend one to attack. Okay, that is a burst. That is another burst. Okay, one, two, three, four, and a focus. Taking out these two minions. I'm going to spend this to solve. For one more focus, two, which is the five needed to um, oh, I believe though, when I attacked, um, Dowger would have inflicted uh, on me for one damage. But now I have revealed Dowager, 15 health, one armor, three attack. Third inflicts on each hero within four spaces. Send my regards. Okay. Um, so that is my two actions. I'm going to use her ability. No, that takes an action. Can't do that. Exhaust when you would suffer damage. You know what? I'm going to exhaust that so I didn't suffer Dowager's one on my attack. Um, you know what? Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to get rid of that because I could have gotten rid of that to solve. So that would have given me a free solve action which would have flipped Dowager. Now, I am going to use this action as an attack. I am going to play Optimistic Spirit to give myself an extra die. So that is four dice. I need to do 15 damage on Dowager. Three bursts. Uh, and I get a token, so that is three more damage. Okay, I've got five focus tokens. I can't have any more. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage on Dowager. Seven damage on Dowager. And I'm going to spend my five focus tokens to flip to her focused side. So my attack goes up. Um, and then I can use this as a um, special ability. A bit later on, so I'll get rid of my focus tokens. All right, we might just pull this off, but if the villain is near the train, they scheme, otherwise, move the train stop to the villain's scheme space. Okay, uh, move three and inflict one, two, three. They can't inflict, and we do this. Panicked Guard, if the vault is on the sealed side, place one issue token on it. Otherwise, the villain schemes. Move one issue token from the villain card to the overview card. If unable, a crisis occurs. Okay. And the villain's turn. Widowmaker. All right. We get... Where is the green... Crisis symbol. When this card is discarded, return activate. If there is a bystander on this card, defeat that bystander. Otherwise, move one bystander to this card. Okay. Okay, Dowager. Oh, and of course, again, I uh, didn't. Um, two actions. First action, I'm going to attack. I have three dice. Uh, three plus one is four. I'm going to use Optimistic Spirit to get an extra dice, five dice. Let's 
uses one of my actions. One, two, three, four, and two focus tokens. Two bursts. One more burst. One more burst. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've hit seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 plus 7 is 15. 15 is enough to take out Dowager. Oh, Dowager would have activated doing 4 damage to me which would have put me at 6 health of 15, not even close anyway. Wow, just in the nick of time, before she escaped with the last gold bar, Majesty has managed to take out Dowager. Now, there are probably rules that I got wrong. Of course, I want to go back and kind of refine it, but you get an idea of what Hour of Need is like. I absolutely enjoyed this game session. I think... It's a really streamlined version of the Street Master system. I love Brook City. Brook City is one of my favorite games, but it's very fiddly. This lowers that, uh, that level of kind of fiddliness to make it much more uh, enjoyable, I guess you would say. The miniatures are great. The burst system on the dice is fantastic. Um, just an all-round, really enjoyed this game. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, follow us on Facebook, um, Amazon, you know, all the usual places. Uh, more videos will be coming out. So, yep, yeah, and I'm definitely do I definitely will be doing more playthroughs of Hour of Need. I think this game is a fucking masterpiece, in my personal opinion. I'm putting this up there now as one of my top three games, even though I've only played it once. I just think the system is fantastic. So this is up there with. Marvel Champions, and Final Girl uh, as games that will never, ever leave my collection. Stay safe, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.